I miss my hair. Used to use head and shoulders, now I use mop and glow. I used to have long hair, long rock and roll hair. I listened to rock and roll music. Thought my music was the most powerful music ever. Now I listen to it now, not so much. Steve Miller Band, I listen to them all the time. Yeah, listen to them now. Boy, these brilliant lyrics like Abra, Abra, Cadabra. I want to reach out and grab you. Boy, that's... <laughs> Sounds like something Forrest Gump would write for Jenny, doesn't it? Uh, I want to reach out and grab you, Jenny. <laughs> I know what love is. <laughs> My daughter listens to this guy named Bruno Mars. He has a any Bruno fans here? Then you'll know this song's real. I said, play that song again. I want to hear the words. Song called, I would catch a grenade for you. This is a love song. I would catch a grenade for you. That sounds like an ISIS wedding song to me. <laughs> What's romantic about I would catch a grenade for you? It's a, in the song I listen to, it's about this heartbroken guy telling this girl, I would catch a grenade for you, cut my hand with a blade for you, jump in front of a train for you, put a bullet in my brain for you. This guy doesn't take rejection well, does he? <laughs> Grow up, be a real man, slash your tires and move on. That's how you do it. <laughs> if my daughter brought home a guy and said, sir, I would take a grenade for her, I'd say, prove it, son, and then that would be that. <laughs> But some uh, people are romantic, more romantic than me. I, you know, don't give me those looks. I tried it, I'm willing to try. I tried it with my wife. I walked up to her at the kitchen table, uh, reading the paper she was. I said, hey, I take a grenade for you. <laughs> Didn't even look up from the newspaper. Now, where would we get a grenade? <laughs> and I used to listen to this band called The Who. There we go. Remember, yeah, remember at the end of the concert in the 60s, Pete Townsend took a perfectly good guitar and he'd smash it, smash it on stage into pieces and kids cheered. They thought it was cool. I thought that was stupid. But six months ago, in my driveway in North Carolina, I was doing the exact same thing to a weed whacker that wouldn't start. <laughs> and I felt liberated. And I was green plastic pieces laying everywhere, and the silence is broken by my wife, the fourth grade school teacher, standing behind me, hands on hips. Does it make you feel good to break something just because it doesn't work? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and then she asked the wife question. Did it have gas in it? I'm not gonna answer a stupid question like, did it have gas in it? Because I wasn't sure. <laughs> I said, you're not the one out here in the hot sun every Saturday morning. <laughs> and it's not that it won't start. It's that it teases you and gives you the impression that it might. 